Hello, everybody, and welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 34. So we're going to go with Jeremy with the Bibcot No Gov license. Yes, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the Bibcot No Government license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at bipcot.org. I'm thinking about uh, talking to Michael Dean, maybe getting my beard covered by the <clears throat> Bipcot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so today we have uh, Jared Howe, who's known on uh, on his various um, outlets as Jerry One J Three Four Four Three and let, uh, Number One spelled out on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and SoundCloud primarily. Uh, so, if you want to follow his work, he consistently puts out um, one rap song per week, uh, primarily uh, anarchist volunteers type rap. So. If you're into that stuff, check him out, please. Give him some likes, give him some shares, and hopefully donate. I don't know, do you have um, ways people can donate to you yet? Did you yeah, we'll actually make sure the link ends up in the show, but I have, and I forgot to mention this last after the last time we spoke to Nilo, I got uh, an album up on SoundCloud. I take donations by PayPal. The album's free if you want to give me money. Awesome. Thank you. I talked to him on how to set up a Bitcoin the other day, too. Yeah, and I, I actually know a, a bit about Bitcoin and blockchain, and I've been looking into it for, into it for a while. I just haven't got around to setting up a wallet. But yeah, Dave hooked me up with some knowledge the other day. So just another greedy uh, capitalist, uh, you know, <laughs> giving us stuff away for free. Giving us stuff away for free. That's it. Yep. See, I'm you such get, a piece of shit. <laughs> you know, we got to stop doing that. <laughs> so Jared, yeah, thanks a lot for coming on the show. I, I, yeah, I talked to you on my show, and uh, it's great to see you here. And thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, so so we'll talk about some of your um, some of your recent songs, but uh, you know, just get into some uh, general current events, what's going on. There's always stuff to talk about in the world of statism. <laughs> so uh, so your recent your recent songs are the downfall and uh, and then jubilee about the uh, the death of Erwin Schiff, uh, the father yeah. the father of Peter Schiff. So um, you know, can you start maybe? Um, how did you become a volunteer? It's just just like I saw we we were asking in the the Seeds of Liberty. Uh, group and one person just wanted to you know hear your background again so if you would share that with us yeah maybe be a little more specific too I started like 10 years ago into like conspiracy theory type things that probably wouldn't be helpful for what I'm doing now at all <laughs> um, and from there like 2007 I had a friend put me in a, onto Ron Paul's campaign I learned a lot about the Federal Reserve and the way fractional reserve banking works in general and I've I've understood banking like just what's wrong with the system for quite a bit got trapped in like a minarchist paradigm type thing where i thought that we needed to end the fed but have congress control the circulation of money and have it be a gold standard and then i had a friend put me onto like um you know like M mises institute type stuff <clears throat> which taught me that you don't need a central institution circulating currency and then from there i'm like well if i don't need a central institution circulating currency why am i a minarchist why am i even voting <laughs> yeah so it's just like a, a natural logical progression into anarchy yeah yeah I, I've, I've heard that before you know like um they're like if we could just abolish the fed and have the united states print a gold-backed currency and i go i always ask them if the state can control the money then they can control everything yeah, exactly. So once you have the money, you don't even you don't even need to pass laws, and I think that's pretty obvious, right? They break their own laws. They broke their own laws to kill Erwin Schiff. I mean, I'm all for a gold-backed currency by a private institution that people voluntarily adopt, yeah, exactly. which I think people would frickin' run to, but the government's not going to allow that. The Fed would shut that down quickly. And that's what it is nowadays. It's like I'm about <laughs> people will say, I want to abolish the Fed. I'm like, yeah, I'm with you. And they're like, I want a gold backed currency. Yeah, I'm with you. I want the government to be in control of it. What? <laughs> <laughs> so close. So close. <laughs> Lost me. Swing and a miss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a mindset it's a mindset that, that if if only we get the perfect people in power that you know we will reach we will achieve a utopia right so so government is like uh, i guess uh, i've heard this uh, analogy that people view government as a tool like a gun is a tool like an axe like a car like a computer they're tools the government is a tool that we can use to improve our lives uh <laughs> when in fact it's like no i'm sorry a government is composed of individuals right it's not a tool it's just people who consider themselves um exempt from the laws of morality and economics 
uh, that all of us are, uh, um, you know, subjected to. So no, <laughs> it's not well, like I mean, an ex <laughs> If you're that concerned about people having power over people, why create a huge loophole right that like that? It's like this huge flaw, logical inconsistency. Uh, this is everything I'm against, so we're gonna do everything I'm against to stop what I'm against. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Yeah. It, it, it's that religious belief in the state, you know. <laughs> Jeremy will tell you. <laughs> well, sure. well, and I mean, how long have they been trying incrementalism? You, you know what I mean? That shit only works for Marxists. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah it, it it does. It, I mean, it can work and it can work against us. Actually, it has been for quite a long time. Well, yeah, it does. Um, and that, yeah, exactly. In that process, but you know, we just did that episode last week with Lou Fien about that. incrementalism. <laughs> and uh, I mean, the, the thing is, yes. I mean, Dave said it's you know it's a religious type belief, which I, I would agree with. But the you know you mentioned the logic. I mean, that is the problem. I mean, I've discussed this before, and I, I know it's not exactly you know. Um, un, 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 unknown knowledge in our circles, but for the most part, most people don't realize that they don't understand logic. They don't they even never think it's it. real. They don't even well, think you, it's real. Yeah, they yeah they they hear logic and they go, oh I know yeah. Or I've talked to people who said, oh yeah, logic. I remember that. I learned that in in math class. And it's like yes, and, and that's what I've been saying for <clears> the longest time is that it's... logic is purposely not taught beyond the field of mathematics. So many in of these school. conversations end up with, I don't believe in universals on their part. How do you, you don't fucking believe in an objective <laughs> truth. So you have, you're telling me that I should accept an objective position, that there's no objective positions, like a yes. universal. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's, that's the second part of that. It's the contradictions that they don't even realize they're stepping in. Cause that, that's, I, I love that. That's like, you know, that's the, the famous refrain from most uh, nihilists that have come across. I mean, there are ones that I've actually have been able to have rational conversations with, but, yeah, a, lot, but a lot of them, when you boil it, when you get them to boil it down, it's to, well, there's the, there is uh, everything subjective. You just and why are you even having you, this conversation you, you, with me? Well, Am I yeah, wrong? You could, you, could, you, could, you could go either two. You could go either two ways. What's the point of this conversation? Or you just made an objective claim that everything is subjective. In either way, you don't see. You don't see how that itself contradicts itself. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's it's part of it's it's contradiction. I, I actually it's I, I've been saying this, and I, one of these days I'm going to get to it. There's a there's an article I've been meaning to write for a very long time um, about contradictions that we're taught as children. Uh, that most people just don't even make connections to at all. But, you know, there's a meme that goes around a lot that, you know, statism starts at home. I fully believe that. I do too. Um, and it's because of these contradictions that we're, we're taught to accept, you know, even from the, from the most, what seems like the silliest thing, like Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, mm -hmm. all these things that we, we, most people push on their children because, oh, it's cute, it's fun, it's like, yeah, but... A couple of years later, they realized that you, you were lied to them. lying to them. And what yeah. were you teaching? What were most good parents teaching their children that entire time? Don't lie. Don't steal. Don't mm -hmm. hit. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's yeah, like setting the standard at the same time that people who love you will do these things to you, though. Yeah, it's OK to lie, you know, because you, you like most people like it just goes right over their head because I've tried to explain it to them. Like even my family, even my wife, she thinks, oh, they don't they can't think like that. It doesn't know well, that it's not a thinking thing. It's an imprinting thing. Yeah, it's subconscious. What are, exactly. What are you teaching them? You're teaching them that don't lie unless mommy or daddy do it or grandma and grandpa or uncle, uncle and aunt so-and-so. Like, yeah, the adults can do it. You know, same thing with, you know, the majority of people who still who still hit their kids and they, you know, euphemistically yeah. call it spanking. Don't hit. You know, and for me, it goes back. To, it, it always goes back to one of my favorite comedians, um, Bill Engvall. Uh, you know, one of the guys from the Blue Collar Comedy Tour. Yep. You know, friends with you know, I found I found him years ago before he even like he was friends with those guys, but before they started all that stuff. And he was a clean comic, but his whole bit was you know, here's your sign um, about stupid people. Like if stupid people had to wear signs, the rest of us would save a hell of a lot of time because we wouldn't ask them questions. You know, you just oh, I see you saw it. Never mind, sorry. <laughs> but the, the, the one bit he had was about his kids, and he's like, and I was out front with my kid, with my kid, with my son, and he was playing with his friend, and he hit his son. He hit, he hit, he hit his friend, and I walked up to him and hit him and said, "We don't hit." <laughs> and he's like, and then my son looked at me with this look like, "Here's your sign, Dad," because it's because that's <laughs> what it is. People don't get that that you teach these impressionable sponges. You know, they, they say that, you know, that, you know, most kids, you know, your, 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 the male brain doesn't uh, mature until like 25, the female brain fully right. to like 20 or whatever. But yeah. most of the imprinting is done by five or six years old. 
Mm-hmm. And most people don't realize what they've taught their kids because, oh, mm-hmm. I was taught that. But that and sets think, the stage later on to accept these contradictions from the state. You think about it too, and the, and the vast majority of households still engage in even what, you, what would euphemistically be called spanking, hitting, abuse. That's what I would call it. I have a hard time talking about this because I don't have any kids and people will attack me for bringing it up. But you're exactly right. Think about it. <clears throat> you're hitting somebody instead of reasoning with them and then saying, I love you. This is what people who love you are going to do. So when they move out of their houses and they go out into society with the rest of us and the state does that, it feels pretty right to them. It feels familiar and comfortable. Yep, just like really. Yeah, you're right. Create, it creates see. that Stockholm syndrome. Or yeah. What did Live I see the other day? Syndrome. Live Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, it, it's that... Um, appeal to authority you don't you don't have kids so you can't nothing you could say could be possibly correct about children right and i've never had parents either (laughs) i I have no i can't have an opinion on parenting because i've never had parents either so yes you see when people tell you you know you can't have an opinion because you don't have kids about you know about raising kids um you know the way i look at that (laughs) go ahead go ahead ahead. i was gonna say so does that mean you can't have an opinion about ceos because you've never been yeah yes exactly (laughs) that that's the exact argument i always make i usually go with um with sports are you a fan of sports oh yeah yeah you have an opinion on your team of course have you ever played (laughs) professional baseball no then how the hell can you speak on it (laughs) <laughs> but again, it goes right over their head because oh, yeah. they don't make the connections. Or they do and they don't want to acknowledge it. So their yeah, strategy is cognitive to dissonance. slander them. Slander them. Don't, don't let me face my cognitive dissonance. Yeah. Cognitive uh, ignorance. I, I don't Cogn- want to call it mm-hmm. cognitive dissonance anymore. It's just ignorance. And that's the problem that, that a lot of people face. They, they're brought into ignorance. They're indoctrinated into it. And they continue the cycle of it. And that's what leads to authoritarianism like you, you, you teach a tile, child that an authority figure is always right no matter what and they can do whatever but you can't do those things you have to act differently that's what they're going to expect from anybody that is filling those authoritarian shoes the rest of their lives and that's that's why wars happen that's why Mao's and Stalin's and Barack Obama's get elected that's why uh, all this shit happens and a lot of people don't understand that the root cause is ignorance and and the cycle of it that's very true. And if people read the book, uh, The History of War and Child Rearing, I think is what it's called, something along those lines by Lloyd DeMoss. I think it's on Free Domain Radio. Steve, Stephen Molyneux has a reading of it. That book is fucking mind blowing. I, I would give people money if they could get through that and not have a, a different opinion on spanking if they still believe in it ahead of time. I don't think it's possible. I really don't. I, I was spanked viciously a lot. If I didn't get a spanking almost every day, my parents would be like, Weren't, didn't, did we spank you today? <laughs> oh, no? Okay, well, you go to your room. I'll be there in a minute. You know? <clears throat> I, I'm Obviously, I'm exaggerating, but if I didn't get at least three or four whippings a week, that was a shocker. Dad's falling, yeah. asleep, at, dad's it, falling asleep at night. I knew there was something I was supposed to do today. What was it? I mean, you can imagine. I, I mean, I'm... Get up. I'm a naturally sarcastic, <laughs> very sarcastic person, and I'm a naturally contradictory person. Like, I, if you say something, I'm going to make you prove that point. I'm going to debate you, even if I I'm a, I'm like, <laughs> you know, like uh, I, you know, I, I used to judge debate contests, and I was, you know, I'd get up and I would talk to these people, and I'd say, I'm against abortion, but I guarantee you that I could get up here and debate for abortion and crush anybody here that um is anti-abortion does anyone want to test me and have to do that in school is uh pick sides and then switch and then debate the other side that's the only way you honestly know how to defeat a idea is to completely understand that idea so it it, the big the biggest thing i tell people is whenever you're challenging something something's in your head and it's the gears aren't spinning you're, you're you're resisting the you know you're resisting it you know think about the other side and try to beat their argument you know, like how how do they win? Find out how they win, and then that's what I did with voluntarism. I couldn't figure out how to beat vol- voluntarism, so I'm like, that's right. It's unassailable. <laughs> yeah. Unless the you're a, a, a unless you're a sociopath, it's very very hard to uh, logically and rationally uh, pick apart voluntarism. That's, that's uh, correct. I, I don't even know about that because I mean, 
according to all those silly tests they put out all the time, I'm a sociopath. I found volunteerism. <laughs> I've, I've, made a num- I've, made, I've made a number of friends who are actually could definitely fall into the category of sociopaths. I would they're, argue uh, that they're volunteer. They're, they're volunteers too. <laughs> do I need to call? Um, do I need to call animal services on you or something? Should I be worried? No, because I, 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 I had a, oh, go ahead, Bill. I, no, I was gonna say I had a conversation today. I was at the farmers market. This guy I buy bread from all the time. It's kind of weird. I never talked to him about anything except bread. And then today he lays on this conversation about non-duality and how nothing, nothing, none of us exist. Everything is an illusion. Oh, no. Life is an illusion. Death is an Solipsism. illusion. Solipsism. Right. And 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 I'm like, wait, wait, what? Wait. And I'm like, so. And then he's like, and then we have meetings and we talk. I'm like. What do you talk about? Uh, I can't really describe it. We, you, you just have to be there. All right, you have speakers. Yeah. What do they talk about? Uh, I don't know. I can't really. Ex- <laughs> I'm like, how did you learn about this stuff? Uh, you don't learn it. You just, I don't know, acquire it. Okay. All right. And they started talking about determinism, and like, there's no free will. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, <laughs> I've lost. I don't. And I'm I like, don't... I'm like, Dave, Dave, is that you? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <I'm> sorry, man. <laughs> how how do I kill Danilo's? Video and audio feed again. <laughs> I um, but it was it I've was amazing. People was... write me out completely over uh, believing in free will. Really? Uh, like I've had social justice warriors committed to nihilism. I've seen them committed to nihilism before. Committed to solipsism. How can you prove that anything is real? I'm like even if I couldn't, even if I could, even if you were right, even if solipsism was a thing, it wouldn't matter because you're talking to me and not a blade of grass. <laughs> yeah it's it's deep like uh that's that's some existential shit that that guy was trying to talk to you danilo uh, like uh it it's some shit that comes out of like a heavy acid trip or <laughs> or something like that so Man, like how dare you to great acid trips like that like like all right no like like i know i've been there <laughs> like so like the way you deal with that is you just, just says yeah man i need to ponder on that <laughs> like that, like seriously, because I have these thoughts in my head all the time. Because like, when you go on a roller coaster, right, uh, you, and you get off, and someone goes, "Tell me everything about the roller coaster," you're just like, "Well, it was fast, and it was scary, and whew, it was just insane." You know, we went up and down and up and down. That there's no real way to explain it. You know, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. that's the same way a mushroom trip or an acid trip is. Yeah, like exactly. Uh, there was things that happened. I, I can, I can, I, I can internally understand them, but I can't tell you. And uh, that's where all those crazy ideas like that, nothing, nothing, we're not here. This is all virtual reality. Right, that's where right. all that shit comes from. And I think it's all very interesting. You know what I mean? It's I very don't interesting. Think it has any place in like logical or rational discussion at all? It's like it's like aesthetics. It's like poetry or something. You know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> the human mind is insane. Uh, me and Donnie were. We're gonna. Uh, we were talking about uh, parallel universes and, and if their action a- actions in different parallel universes were moral <laughs> or something. <laughs> it was insane. We were we were on a deep tangent, but uh. And they were sober too. So. That yeah, yeah, we were. I mean, <laughs> talking to me in that in that fashion, it, it sober doesn't matter. I'm I'm I'm. It's deep. Uh, but uh, so like um. Oh, do you, you don't worship Cthulhu, do you? Because that was one of the questions that was asked uh, for you. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Sorry. All right. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> okay. Was... All right. Just I just wanted to knock a few Wor- of these worship, out. Worship. Worship's such a, such a strong word. Worship. What about, what, what about greatly admire? <laughs> <laughs> I, I submit gracefully. No. <laughs> well, so so uh, what what are some of your musical influences in in philosophical and in just your style? My musical influences, like music, music is all <clears throat> Drake, uh, pro- progressive metal. Uh, uh. Like I'm a guitarist by uh, originally. When I that's how I got into music was through guitar. So with hip hop, my influences are like Deltron, 3030, Aesop Rock, LP. Um, just like guys, I don't, I don't want to say guys like that. They're all very different, and mm. none of them are really like pol- uh, politically or philosophically inspirational to me they just made me want to rap as far as like <clears throat> philosophic inspiration and like where i'm coming from it's just a confluence of all that different shit you know what i mean like self-ownership has always been my big thing that's what got me into the ron paul movement in like 2007 that's what kept me researching and learning economics like even up to this day you know what i mean 
So yeah, it's a rabbit hole. You jump in and you just keep going, you keep going, you keep learning. And you, you know, like I think the big thing that voluntarist and, and any rational thinker or critical thinker does is they never allow an idea to get so buried deep into their head that they won't question it. And I think that that's something that, that we should applaud each other for is, is, like even like that, like I was I was talking the other day. Even the idea of voluntarism, if something else can come along that sounds more rational and better to me, I'm going to that. But I don't see that happening. But I'm not willing to not question my own beliefs. I still don't feel like um I deserve to be applauded for it yet, man. I still it's even within the last year I thought that Congress should be in control of the money. You know what I mean? Like if. I, I can't believe I couldn't reconcile Article 1, Section 8 in my own head. It's so simple when you look at it rationally. It's a big, yeah. it's a biggie. It's a big one. I, 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 I read it to my kids for, for a, almost a year <laughs> at night as they were going to sleep wow. without even realizing what I, like, thinking this was a wonderful thing. Like, I used to read them section, like, my wife thought I was crazy. I used to, I was, because I was a huge constitu uh, constitution I, humper. Same here. And uh, I used to, I, I used to read them passages of out of it at, at, as part of their story for sleep. Ooh, statism does start at home. Seriously, man, that's what I was doing to them. <laughs> luckily, they were they were child under, abuse. Yeah. It should be. Um, <laughs> luckily, they they were under a year and a half old at the time, and they do not recall this because I've asked them, and they don't recall me reading the. They don't even recall the word constitution. People, okay, they, people, they do you know, know like, the word anarchy though, so that's a plus. <laughs> <That's a laughs> what is what does your kid call it, Danilo and Kiki? Oh. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Your daughter's, right, that, yeah, that's what she's called. That was when she was one. There were one in three, and I got that book, um, A Rules to Break, A Child's Guide to Anarchy, which oh, by the end, at, the end, at, at the end of the book, uh, the, it says, you know, break, rip this book up, and uh, that's what they did. They eventually ripped it up. Oh, uh, <laughs> see, I, that was the one thing I taught, that was the one thing I taught my kids that I, did, I, I wasn't a fan of. I said, if you want to, fine. I don't particularly like that passage in this book, and thankfully they Perfect. haven't done so yet. I um yeah. I really like that you guys call things by their proper names. I think I've heard in episodes before that your kids call cops land pirates. I road pirates. Road pirates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so good. I'd love his, that. His, his his kids do. I'm trying. I'm still working on my kids. That's what I refer to them as. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically a kid, and I call them that. So yeah, <laughs> it, it it works. <laughs> yeah, my, since my son was three, he he knew he knew the difference between currency and money. And I, and I taught him that the silver, uh, one ounce silver coins is, is money, and the paper, you know, that I get from the ATM, that's just, it's just currency. It's just paper, so, right? So yeah, it's just Social it's, it's just justice paper. warriors are going to hate your kids. <laughs> <laughs> I think PC is, is uh, I, it, it, I think it's minor right now. Uh, minor? But I think, no, I think it's, it's minor. Easy? It's been one of the like driving political correctness? It's been one of the driving forces behind most of the change in yeah, the last but here's, 100 years. No, 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 it hasn't. <laughs> Look, if you had 100 normal people, if you just got 100 random people, as long as you weren't at a college campus, and you sat down and you said, okay, who here is in favor of PC legislation? I guarantee you that way under the majority, or even like a minority wouldn't raise their hand. Like It would be like one or two people. Legislation has nothing to do with it. To say it hasn't been an integral part is, 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 is a little silly, though, man. That's what, I mean, that's but how it's... But, Jeremy, are you seeing all these, these, these companies, like this, this one swimsuit company in Britain, they, they were like, they put all these... <laughs> yeah, they put all, in, in all the bus stations and everything, they had all these girls, like, perfect-looking body, 10 girl, and all these people were like, you're body shaming all this, and, like, the, the CEO comes out and goes... Get fucked. He basically goes, get fucked. I don't care. This is what people want to see. And guess what? They're like, you can take, he said, you can take all this SJW, all this PC bullcrap and throw it in the trash. I don't care. We're doing our ads the way we want them. And their sales went up 1000%. So <laughs> this PC bullshit to me is as good as dead. The left is eating itself. People hate the fucking media is what it comes down to, and everybody in the media is left-wing. Even fucking Bill O'Reilly is a socialist that pretends to be a Republican. You know what I mean? They're, the whole yeah. media is left-wing. Well, I, I, I won't disagree with that. My, my point was just that, because I actually did research on the history of political, the term political correctness, because I was writing an article for a, a website I used to work for a couple of years ago. And, uh, you know, it's, it, started, it started in, the, in, in Russia, um, between the socialists and the and the communists, they were fighting each other, and they were using. It. And, it, and it, that's actually where the term came from. I can't remember which side started it, but they were referring to the other side as that's how they were. 
it was an insult to them. It, it, it wasn't what it means now. But anyway, but the point is, it's, it's been used. And yes, a lot of people, the term has become synonymous with so many other things that and it's evolved that mo it's just a word now that a lot of people yes when they hear it they will they will rail against the word but they don't realize that that's what a lot of the propaganda and and rhetoric that people believe that you know over the years that we've that's what it was it, it came from a standpoint of political correctness they they were shaping the narrative to get people to that that's how that's how that's why so many people had they they were upset but they turned over their gold that's why so you know like all these things that happen throughout the history like people, it's they, almost they, they change the language it seems like an oxymoron to me you know what i mean like even a uh, politically correct legislation if you think about that like of what course. is the legislation going to do it's going to steal from people or get people hit or thrown in cages for resisting being stolen from how can that be politically correct how can coercion be politically correct because it's, it's of my a, feels yeah, because of my feels, because of ignorance <laughs> is strength and war is peace and all that shit. Nineteen eighty four or so. Like speak. here's here's like my big thing when I run into like someone PC and they're like your pronouns are hurting my feelings and stuff like that. I just say there are people that are <laughs> starving. <laughs> Triggered. To, there are people that are starving to fucking death, and this is all you have to worry about. Someone saying he instead of Z. That's what you're fucking worried about right now. You're not worried about where you're going to sleep tonight, if you're going to drink cold or clean nope. water. No, you're worried about <laughs> someone using the in, the English language not to your liking. Shut the fuck up and go yeah. home. <laughs> yeah, no, they're selling unborn babies on the bond market to pay for everything government does, but I'm worried. I think the biggest problem in the world is pronouns. Yeah. yeah. So it's or, or women don't get paid as much. Oh, if I hear that one more time, I think I might lose it. Like if, if, okay, if women get paid less, then why isn't, why isn't the unemployment market just completely full of men and only women being hired? Like that, like that right there, that one, that one line destroys their entire argument. Cause any good capitalist I know would be like, I ain't going to pay women as much. Fuck. Yeah. Boom. I'm, I'm, I'm getting all these women to come well, work. If that, yeah, exactly. If that was true, that creates a huge, huge market of people who could pay women more money. Yep. Women and women would flock to that, and they would eventually be making more money. It's not. There's no economic reality in any of the <clears throat> any of these narratives. It really isn't. No, it's just, just no it's economics just isn't. Words. Economics was created by an evil white person. Exactly, yes, you it's should a rich know that. White person mm -hmm. conspiracy. Just, I, I've literally been told that. It's Me just too. Buzzed, like at least well, a couple times. I was just gonna say, Danilo said buzzwords. Yeah, that's exactly what it was, and they're used as part of a as as a part of a form of political correctness. Going back to my original point, just saying. But anyway, <laughs> so, I'm, not disagreeing, a, I'm not disagreeing good, with you guys. I'm not disagreeing no, with you guys though, point, Sam, because I, I'm absolutely I, I'm absolutely in agreement. I, I think it's ridiculous. I, I mean, I tell people all the time, being offended is a choice. I think so. You know, if you're offended by nice anything point. anybody says, that's your problem, not mine. Because I mean, you, you can still be, be happy with a with a gun to your face. I mean, you, I mean, there's there's anything like you choose how you're going to act. But uh, Lisa, let me let me ask you a question. Like, what's your ultimate goal out of this rap? Uh, I don't want to say rap game because that sounds too cliche. But like, what's your ultimate goal out of this whole thing? Like, like if 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 Jerry one goes, I've made it. I, I've I've reached everything I've wanted to do with my rapping. What would that look like? <laughs> that's you've a tough stumped, question you've, you've stumped him <laughs> i'm rapping for no for no government so what would that what would a stateless society look like dave <laughs> no 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 like, like you individually what, what, not like like what, 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 uh, utopia. Wow, what, a, what a way to backdoor somebody into that question i never thought explain <laughs> <laughs> to me what a stated utopia would, or stateless <laughs> utopia would look like um, well, there would be every, everything would look like the Jetsons, and uh, uh, all the people no, who man. wanted government, we would just move them to Australia, and uh, yeah, that's that's about it. I could never see myself being happy at, at any point as long as or not. I, let me rephrase this. I'm happy now. You know what I mean. I couldn't see myself stopping at any point as long as the state exists. So even if I made it to a point where I was like <clears throat> swimming in money or something like that, which I don't expect 
I don't. It, it probably won't happen through rap if it does happen. Yeah. If, if you if you do end up like that, you have to change your name to like MC Scrooge McDuck or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think what I would want to do is just help other people get the, especially anarchists and voluntarists get their message out there because I think that's really what's important. It's given you know like-minded people a platform to speak. Confirmation bias and ganging up on people is how Marxists achieved incrementalism dude they never made a fucking argument ever you know what i mean nope. yeah they just bully people into silence yeah exactly and i'm not i'm not advocating for bullying people but there's definitely strength in numbers and value in linking arms with each other you know what i mean yeah mm -hmm. um, i think that's a that, that's a weird question because it's like it's like asking an abolitionist of the 19th century you know if if, if chain slavery was no longer uh, would, you know, around. What would you be doing with your time? What's wrong? <laughs> like, did, haven't you realized that? No. No, no. Uh, like I, that I wasn't. There's, this... always gonna, there's always going to be injustices. There's always going to be things because it's only the the irate minority, right, that drags drags the majority of of you know, uh, you know, what do you call that? Um, conformist minded people that refuse to think rationally or logically. They're their 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 thinking their consciousness is always changed by those people that are passionate about you know seeing you know justice and morality come come forward right so there's always going to be something uh, that wasn't really like the the spirit of the question I was asking is like I kind of turned it on you you can rephrase if you no want. Like, it was kind of <laughs> like it was kind of like uh, what do you like what's your pie in the sky like dream from this like like if you reach the max of what you want in this like how when what will that look like essentially <laughs> outside of the ab abolition of the state we're, we're talking about just you personally like would you would you like to go on tour and rap would you like yeah, to absolutely yeah absolutely. that would be all, like a voluntarist rap uh wouldn't it be cool to hit like uh freedom conferences and anarcho-capitalist conferences and stuff like that maybe speak maybe do performances or maybe even get into the game of trying to get other musicians together and organizing like larger music events stuff like that. all we gotta uh, do is i mean the sky's the limit every uh, every new level reached is a new opportunity or at least five new opportunities but Jared, how can you how can you be getting ahead if you're just giving away your stuff away for free? Come on. <laughs> I mean, you already got a hundred thousand plays on SoundCloud. That's pretty almost. That, that's pretty freaking awesome. I mean, that is a lot of views in a little time. And if that is an exponential growth that can keep going, like I mean, when's Drake gonna be on your next song? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's guys out there getting hundreds of thousands of plays that <clears throat> aren't anywhere near J Drake. I um. I like the the journey of it, man. Like this is fun for me, just like meeting guys yeah. like you, fucking networking with people who are smart and intelligent. Like I'm not smart or intelligent, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, that's, why, that's why he put us. That's what he put us before he made that statement. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting time to be alive, I think, and all of this is fun, man. Back in 2007, I never thought I never thought anybody would even get into Ron Paul. And then in 2012, he won our state. You know what I mean? I was a delegate for Ron Paul in 2012. And then fast forward to now, kind of losing hope again because I did minarchism for another three years after 2012. But <clears throat> like discovering Mises and Rothbard gives me that same type of feeling and passion. And like seeing just like the fucking explosion of support and like activity in this movement is just inspiring. Every single day, it's a reason to get out of bed. I mean, you, yeah, can, it's amazing. Can you can you talk about your recent uh, your recent song, The Downfall? Just exp explain what you were what, what you were uh, talking about in that one. Uh, yeah, I mean it's kind of abstract in a sense. <clears throat> it uses a lot of double entendres that I don't want to explicitly explain, but it's okay. about uh, order followers and doing the right thing. Uh, there's some stuff in there about smoking weed. Because what good rap song is? <laughs> Every good rap song. Complete nice. without smoking weed, yeah. Um, yeah, man. I, I try to write in a way that's very anti-state and pro-freedom while simultaneously open to interpretation. I'm not trying to, like, force anybody down a narrow path with my music in the way that I am with my writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> well, I, I, mean, I mean, I... It's funny. I, I was never, like, a huge rap fan 
Uh, I mean, I went through stages. I mean, I'm older than I'm older than all you guys. Um, so I was I was actually listening to uh, much uh, much. I, I was actually old enough to be listening. To, not well, you. Okay, maybe, yeah. No, me and Demilo <laughs> are young guns with the whole world um, anyway, in front of us, and anyway. you're you're getting ready to sign up for the nursing home. I don't want to hear it. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I, I was I was I was just starting to listen to more adult type music when uh you know NWA and Public Enemy were out, um, so I, I go back from like that stuff, Run DMC and all that, um, sure. and then I never never really got into cool it again. in the gang. Yeah, no, I'm not that old. Um, I uh, I mean I was alive when they were playing. Uh, <laughs> of course, of I, course you were. Um, but the point was I. I'm sorry, know, I'm just I, an I, ageist fucking bourgeois. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's uh I, I i you know a couple people along the way but i never really did but now like i've been drawn in like i just recently um it was a little only a little before um you did danilo's show that i had actually heard about you um i don't know how i missed it <laughs> um but i like people like you that i've come across so somebody like me who is never really a big rap fan has been drawn to your music and drawn to people just not, and like I said, they're all different. I not, not to put them in the, to put you in the same category as like the, you know, some of the other guys out there that are doing like the Liberty type stuff. Um, but they, you know, cause everybody has their own own approach to it, but just the, the message that you're all, you know, the similar message that you're all trying to convey. I was able to link to that. So I, I think I found that, that that medium is, is ripe to like you were saying to to reach a, a broader audience like you can reach so many different people even people like myself who didn't really were wasn't really into any type of rap music whatsoever like i've been a you know metal country music guy most of my life like i've switched back and forth between, between those um and you know uh so i think i think it's great i think you know you uh, Thanks, you know I, I think the question that dave asked you was a little leading because yes it is you know what what are you gonna what are you gonna do you, if you're doing if you're having fun doing this and you're liter you're really just trying to get the message out, which you know we've already alluded to multiple times with you, you know, not just accepting donations. Um, so yeah. you're literally just trying to get the message out there and hoping for a good return, which is you know the best you can really do in a in a pure I'm, capitalist society. So <laughs> I, I really appreciate that, man. And I'm honestly I'm kind of blown away by it too. I started really really pushing stuff a year ago, and I went from the bottom. Under- and yeah, I went from the bottom, but to not to the top. No, um, but or, but but now you're here. Now I'm here. Before I had like maybe a year ago, fifty people following me on SoundCloud. Now it's like four thousand people following me on SoundCloud, and um, that's what I found is a, a lot of people that are getting into my music aren't really hip hop fans per se, but they're hearing my hip hop and they're going, "Wow, I've never really heard anything like that." And uh, weird thing is, I mean, there is a lot of American listeners, but I'm getting a lot of European and Asian listeners too. Like people all over the world are listening to this stuff and being like, wow, an American who doesn't like Bernie Sanders, an American <laughs> who d- doesn't just buy into all this fucking bullshit. You know what I mean? And I'm getting huge support from those people. And it's, I, I never expected it. I mean, it's not just falling into my lap either. <clears throat> now, to go back to your question, Danilo, um, how am I able to do this? You know, give all this stuff away for free if I'm a capitalist and all this stuff. I, I wake up at 6 a.m. every day. I go to bed at 10 or 11 o'clock every night. You know what I mean? Every single day, regardless of whether or not I have to be at my day job. And I put another, you know, 30 or 40 hours in every song I make every week. I put another 20 hours into like just writing which I don't even have a blog site I just fucking post it on Facebook and say here it is debate with me if you think, if you think you're gonna be able to hang but most of the people who even try are just fucking you're an asshole fucking you ate, you ate old people you ate black people it's like you got no fucking argument <laughs> so have your parents uh, have you tried to speak with them, uh, to them about volunteerism at all or, or any family members um, I mean, my father passed away like six years ago and my mother is <clears throat> not, she lives like, she has a home here in Maine, but she's not really in state a lot. She works for a large company and travels all the time. She's not against it. She's not going to stop paying her taxes though. And, um, she's not really practicing agorism by any means. If that's, I mean, she doesn't openly disagree with me at this point, but um, other family members have been curious about it. My, I've my had my brother ask me about it, ask me for resources. Uh, even just 
like people I went to high school with and haven't spoken with in a decade being like, Hey, I've been seeing your posts lately. Do you have any resources that I could check out? And like, that's awesome. We've nice. been within the last, especially since I talked to you, Danilo, um, in the last week, at least five to 10 people that I hadn't talked to cool. in years hitting me up. Where can I read more about economics and Ooh, point, nice. Point, point <laughs> right, them at the cool. Mises Institute, and then I just like this is fucking awesome. So I just, I don't want that to stop, man. I want I want to get as yeah. many fucking people into voluntarism and anarcho capitalism and Austrian economics as I possibly can. That's yeah. I mean. and, and and the way the way I look at it, you know, it's not you know people you know when we talk about government and the violence of the state and uh, you know and statism in general, people say, okay, let's start a revolution. No, no. it's not about starting a revolution, <laughs> right? It's about spreading ideas, it's about talking about uh, logic and economics and morality, and slowly, when people withdraw their support from tyrants and despots, then the state crumbles, right? Because it can only survive with the participation and support of the people, right? It's nothing, nothing without the people. You mean you're not part of that anar anarchist group that's going to be killing <laughs> cops on Halloween, Danilo? Right, right. The, na what was it? the, the Nationalist Liberation Militia? <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> National Liberation uh, Militia. I mean, come on, that screams anarchy. Really? It's like, I don't know, I can't say that there's not steered opinion on it. If you Google anarchists, all you get is results of uh, anarcho-communists throwing Molotov cocktails. You know what I mean? So there's definitely kind of a steered yeah, steered narrative going on it's, there. It's, it's why I always sway away from the word anarchy. And, and the only way I will really say it is if I'm pinned up against a wall and they're like, <laughs> do you want anarchy? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> do you want capitalism <laughs> yes well, well, yes. <laughs> but normally I'm like I'm a voluntarist I'm an abolitionist you know yeah. and, then, and then the next question you ask them is please define your terms what is the capitalism what is anarchy right and you know I say let's go to the Merriam Webster dictionary that's a fine resource <laughs> I've done that you know? people have told me that there are there's a third type of property, not private or public. That's the that's the argument. There's a third type of property. <laughs> what is that? What, what, yeah, what is that? Oh, man. It's it's <laughs> no 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 no. It's 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 Zer's property. <laughs> oh no no. Let's not even go there. I only do things for Danilo laughs. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we know. Dave. Hashtag Danilo laughs. All right. <laughs> 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 but um, but but yeah. So so uh, you know that when people when people ask me, you know, what what can I do, you know, to you know improve the world or decrease statism or decrease violence, you know, it's not about electing the right politician. It's not about advocating for any law or tax or regulation. You know, it always comes back to individual. It always comes back to you know how you lead your life. You know what principles you stand for, right? And raising your kids in a like like manner, right? Raising your kids to be logical, compassionate, moral people right empathetic people how, how else do you expect to change the world some things you know that are happening in in south africa and and the middle east i can't directly influence right i can't do much about it but if i if i ever <clears throat> get a politician to try to do something about it most of the time he's going to make it worse so why are you going to do that stop All the time. stop trying All to help time. Me. <laughs> I, I mean if you watched the rnc debates last night cory for fewer carly for fewer arena said when government steps in, things always get worse. But you so know, let hey, me step in. so let, let me be yes. president. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, it, they there was so much uh, truth being spouted out on that RNC convention last night. It was so funny. They were like, um, the government is stealing from you. The government is doing this. They're a bunch of scumbags and, and thievers. And I'm like, yes. Now carry it to the logical conclusion, Chris Christie. <laughs> Put the cheeseburger down and fucking think in your little head. <laughs> oh, yeah, government's stealing from you. Uh, uh, that was a joke, by the way, Chris Christie. If you do perhaps get elected, like let's say there's everyone else dies. Um, yeah, um, that was a joke. Don't come like send a gulag to, to take me off to special and special camp or something. I don't know. It'd be a drone strike, Dave. <laughs> it, it's going to – he's – yeah, a drone strike. <laughs> I don't know if they're drone striking like, people in the U.S. yet. I like, I like the picture of uh, you know you see the uh, the meme of like Obama's drone strike right with dro drone with all the uh, you know uh, I guess the skulls and crossbones and then you see uh, Bernie Sanders uh, drone with like uh, you know the peace symbol and love and 
flowers and shit all over it. Yeah. Vote, vote for change. Change you can believe in. I I saw Bernie Sanders' new ploy today. It came through my news feed as a sponsored post because that's the only way I could. I'm not following him. Um, But it's legalize marijuana. That's his new thing. So he's – I'm not going to say he's abandoned ship on the free plan, the SS free, uh, but he's definitely (laughs) taken another approach, which is – legalized marijuana so between those two things i think he's going to have the young voters who don't think well on lock if you go on the reddit and you yeah. go into our trees which is the marijuana reddit uh it's the top five posts there'll always be something about bernie sanders or something i i just mm. i i follow a, a lot of different uh subreddits and all of them show up on my all and I'm always seeing something about Bernie Sanders. And I'm like, where am I getting Bernie Sanders from? And it'll be like our trees. And I'm like, these guys are buying this fucking hook line of stickers. Uh, the uh, that's how Justin Trudeau just got elected in Canada. He literally was like, he's the he's the Communist Party, uh, uh, you know, candidate for in Canada. And he basically is like, yeah, all the, I'm gonna do all this stuff, and I'm gonna legalize weed. We're gonna have legalized well, weed. That's how Barack Obama got elected too. Like, he got the youth vote by being like, let's legalize weed. That was a huge thing for him, and yep. he never fucking did that. Yeah. True. Uh, everybody <laughs> I knew who voted for him voted for him because of that, not, you know, so, the company. Well, and it's so funny. It's, it's everyone hard saying hard. that, oh, it, it's going to be hard for a president to do that. I'm like, no, it isn't. The DEA was created by, um, uh, what is that shit called? Um, executive, yeah. An executive order, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The, the DEA was created by executive order, so you write another executive order saying the DEA is is no longer mm. there. You know how hard that would be to do that. You'd have to but, pick but, up your pen, but, fucking swipe it across the paper. Yeah, then, I mean, I could do it in th- in twenty minutes right now if I was President Obama. Like well, all those people that work there, okay, they have kids. All right, they have wives or husbands. Yeah, they they got to pay. They got to put food on the table. Day. What are those people gonna do without those jobs? That's yeah, that's what I was. I we was. Don't throw people in jail over produce. How are those people's kids gonna eat? How are the exactly. how are the prison guards' kids gonna eat? What about the jail? What about the Philadelphia? Philadelphia decriminalized marijuana. Arrest in Philadelphia have went down seventy five percent. And you're sitting here, you're sitting here telling me that the war on drugs is for all this other shit and all this to keep communities safe. Seventy five percent. If if a police station loses seventy five percent of their arrest, they have to cut officers. Okay, that is bottom line fact. And prisons. If a prison loses seventy five percent of their uh, inmates, you have to shut down. You have to move those prisoners. You have to start consolidating the, the private prisons. So oh oh oh. And, One. Other, and I'm sorry to interrupt. The other thing about this that's just, I think, absolutely tragic, unintended consequence, not unforeseeable consequences, you, situations like Todd Stimson or something like that. I don't know if you guys are familiar with his case, but cured his daughter's cancer with cannabis thrown in jail over it you know it was fucking yep. awful like his he saved his daughter's life they throw mm. him in jail which not only is that an aggress against him but it's an aggress against his daughter now she's growing up you know a couple years of her childhood without her father yeah. yeah it's it's fucking ridiculous there's only one word for it and but that's the problem with the arbitration or the arbitrariness of the state they 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 have no like and and the jurors that elected that or that, that that said he was guilty should be all round up and like tarred and feathered in my opinion, <laughs> and the judge and the DEA and all of them. I mean, they're guilty. Yeah, they yeah. are. Oops. You lock an innocent man. He wasn't sell, selling it. He wasn't out in front of a school uh, selling drugs to little kids. Like fucking that's like if you're gonna have the drug war, that's one. Like no one wants crystal meth being sold to their children. Okay, but. This guy cures cancer for his kids. Let's be pragmatic for a second. You're going to lock him up for that? That makes no sense on fucking the moon or Mars. It makes no sense in this universe. Bootlickers fucking cheer it, dude. They fucking cheer for it. Lick the boots. Fucking, I'm glad. He shouldn't, he put his daughter at risk. Throw him in jail. Fuck you, people. You know what I mean? You're just fucking pathetic bootlickers. I made a meme the other day. Seven people, seven kids have died from... Uh, high school football so far this year, just this year, and I said, "Why aren't we? Why aren't there marches in the street to ban this? Because <laughs> no one has ever died from directly from cannabis use, but 
people are dying because of its prohibition. I mean, we need to ban assault football. Assault football. Yeah, assault football well, needs they're to actually, be. They're actually, they're, I, I, don't, I don't know about parades, but there actually have been movements against against that. <laughs> uh, I used to live. I used to live in a couple of towns where the, the parents were trying to shut down the football program because they thought it was too violent. But I, but overall, I get your point. Yes, there's. Yeah. It's not a. There's there's so many people that still believe the myth of of cannabis and and what or the myth of marijuana because it's you know marijuana was just the term, even the term was made up on the spot. Um, pretty much. <laughs> Reefer um, madness. Does exactly. Any, so, Jeremy, do you remember the original argument that they used to get cannabis, the Stamp Act, passed for it? I don't remember the timeline exactly. Okay. The original core argument that was put out in Congress by, I can't remember the fucking hack that said it, was marijuana increases the chance of a white woman wanting to sleep with a black man. Oh, yeah. Well, that was, I, I, I didn't remember if they <laughs> oh said that God. Congress first. I know I that was one of the arguments, but yeah. That's... Like, that's fucking silly. That made, that's well, stupid. That coming to when, when that happens. You know? Oh, my God. We're losing our traditional values. Black women and, or white women and black men are sleeping together. Ah! Can't have that, man. Wasn't it still illegal in, in Virginia until like the 50s or 60s? It, beyond, it, it wasn't illegal, rights. but you had to buy a tax stamp from the state, but the, the state didn't sell the tax stamps, so it was de facto illegal. I mean, oh, it's, it, not, it's not exactly like prohibition, dude. Like, we're going to make it illegal and then make you desperate to get it back by any means that you let us tax it and i i feel bad because i see both arguments like if we legalized it we could let a bunch of people out of jail but if we taxed it we'd be breaking a bunch of windows you know what i mean so like e either way it's it's a there's no fucking way out of it what needs to be done is there needs to be no legislation regarding cannabis at all because it belongs if people want to buy it in the fucking produce section of a, a grocery store it's a plant you know what i mean it's not a drug it's nobody can die from it. You know what I mean? It's you could you have a greater risk of dying from picking up a fucking I you know isopropyl alcohol and just pounding that. You know, no, more, more people more people die from FDA approved uh, medications than they do from no, no, no. any kind of any kind of hallucinogenic uh, plan or. Danilo, or carry this right? even further. More people die from bathtubs than <laughs> marijuana, right. unless unless by chance all these people that are dying in a bathtub are just really stoned. Which I don't I don't think that's that I don't think that's the case, but <laughs> bathtubs kill more people than weed. Football has killed more people than weed. But, Fucking There you go, anti druggers. There's a, a study for you to go do. Go go try to prove that all the, the that a number of those people were high when they did it. Like that'll cut some time for you. <laughs> but, but, but it's okay though because those those deaths from those medications were all FDA approved, right? So they're FDA yes. approved deaths. FDA approved deaths. Exactly. Right. <laughs> That makes um, it okay. <laughs> so, so Jared, Jared, I know you talked a little bit about how like you 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 found voluntarism or anything, but like, was there a certain individual that like really planted the seed, like that was like that like you were mad at, but then you were like, wait a second, this guy's fucking right. <laughs> Do you remember back that far? I don't really, I don't really get butt hurt like that. I it was. I've always just, like I said, believed in self-ownership and being really motivated to be against the government because of, like, conspiracy. 9-11, dude, fucking drove me batshit fucking crazy. But that motivated me to want to, like, find solutions. So, like, the person that made me want to get into all this was Ron Paul, which, ironically enough, being a politician, you know what I mean? But, I mean, even the conspiracy theory stuff, I don't want to just leave that hanging. Um <laughs> there might be truth in a lot of it, dude. Like maybe, maybe, maybe every conspiracy theory ever is right. Maybe the government's behind all of it, but it's still yeah. just distracts from the point that it's all fucking coercion anyway. So why <sighs> focus on one part of the coercion or this coercion or this coercion when we could focus on the root of the fucking problem? And, and well, the strike way, the, the root. Exists. Yeah. The way I look at it is that e even the most. Uh, you know, dire or drastic conspiracy theory is is nothing compared to what has actually happened that people know about. You know, all the wars and drone strikes and occupations that are actually happening, and the war on drugs. All the suffering as a result of that is nothing compared to these conspiracy theories, even if they are true. You know, yeah, so the there's no that? there's no need to even even focus on them because there's real suffering happening now. It's out in the open that people. Um, you know, they condone and approve because they're done by government agents, right? And they have exempted themselves from the laws of morality. So <laughs> there's no need it, to believe in conspiracy theory. That's it's no big deal because it's like the same thing as if their dad did it. 
Same thing right. as if their mom did it, right? They're, Sky Daddy. <laughs> Sky Daddy. <laughs> Live Stockholm Syndrome. It's uncle oh. Uncle Sam. It's just your uncle, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. We're all a big family. Oh, so God. so if um if <laughs> someone wanted to look up uh, Jerry One on SoundCloud, what no, what song would you say, check this one out before you check any of the other ones out? Um... A lot of people really like the song Monocle and Top Hat. That's currently rated number one conscious rap song on SoundCloud. Has been for like wow. five or six nice. months now. Nice. Um, I'd recommend that one. There's a part two to that song that you might also like. Um, I, I really, I'd recommend going to my SoundCloud page, clicking the button on the front that says tracks, and just click and play and listening to all of them. If you don't like one, skip <laughs> to the next one. Um, there but there's go. a new song every week I usually post on Sundays. Um, I'll take re I, I don't write songs about like explicitly about a specific thing, <clears throat> but I think I'm going to kind of start challenging myself to do that. So I do take requests to an extent. If you want to hear me rap about something specific, hit me up and let me know. And Danilo's soul patch. Anyways. <laughs> Peace, Wine, again. No. <laughs> No, no, that's it. If, if, right, if, he do, if, he, if he does a song, it's going to be about your soul patch. People. Yeah, yeah, just tie it tie it together. Do, do peace. And, home, and homeschooling mom. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's got, a, so, he's got a soul patch. And he loves hot moms. <laughs> Find a way to work those two in and you're good, man. <laughs> uh, so are, are, are you going to grow that beard any longer? Are you going to keep letting it grow or is your job not going to let that happen? My job doesn't. Care David, about Davis, thing. what Davis do you think, Davis? He's teased by your beard. You want me to grow my beard, Dave? <laughs> he's like, he's like, look, yeah, look, if you play. if you can't put your beard on your <laughs> forehead like I'm doing right now, you don't really have a beard, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> Dave, <laughs> Dave regards, you know. For our audio, for our audio uh, listeners, I just put beards up on top of my eyebrow. Beards. <laughs> Dave, has mul <laughs> Dave has multiple, apparently. We'll have righty and lefty. You know, they have different. You know, left acts different than right. You know, they're they're. You know, <laughs> one likes you know I, it gets wrapped know, up in all the SJW know, shit, and the other one wants to wave a flag. It's just really, really <laughs> confusing. It's a, it's a confused beard. My beard has cognitive dissonance. It does. <laughs> it's it's a very. I wish it would just be a moderate. You know. <laughs> you know, I, I love I love interviewing uh, rappers uh, because, you know, you guys you guys can say truths. Um, very quickly and you don't need to explain it you just say it and some some people even need that like some people are drawn to lectures and books and you know the um, uh, what's, what's Mises human action you know things like that huge 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 books right other people love music and that's how they get their their thoughts and their inspiration and and that's fine you know whatever whatever way you can reach people you know it's like it's like like the way Larkin Rose says like um you know some people are like um um you know you they just have to repeat be repeated a phrase so you sometimes you just go up to somebody and say government is illegitimate and then walk away and that's it <laughs> you don't have to say I'm anything a, else I'm, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of that approach <laughs> huge fan I, of that I, approach I, my brother Rose actually my brother my brother who is a like a hard hardline Christian um, you know he doesn't really talk about politics he's like I don't care about earthly things you know so <laughs> uh, so uh, but uh, he, uh, you know every time every time he calls me at the, the the last two words that are said on the phone call every time are question everything I say that to I've said that to him at least a thousand times question everything nice so I, I, I feel I feel that that I feel that I'm, I like that that just just little things, little seeds that you can put in people's head. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm halfway through human action right now, and I love that shit. Like, but it takes me, like, I, I all of my that. concentration. I, 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 it takes all my concentration yeah. to pay attention to it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to fucking, like, pull a good part out of human action and be like, hey, Facebook post that's easily accessible. It's just not going to happen. You know what I mean? And what it gets down to, in my opinion, is <clears throat> all the tolerance for people who are wrong and it ends up with people dead that tolerance the political correctness that has evolved over the centuries or whatever that is the method by which those people achieve their ends that's the method by which they're allowed to use coercion like that's literally so like apologizing for it or t the degree to which you tolerate it is the degree to which you enable evil yourself so i'm not gonna pull any punches if somebody wants my opinion taxation is theft government's a form of slavery anything that infringes on somebody's right to own themselves is a form of slavery it's like <clears throat> uh 
with a woman, you walk up to her, you say, hey, would you sleep with me for a million dollars? And she says, yes. Say, what about 10? And she slaps you across the face. What kind of woman do you think I am? Well, we already established what kind of woman you are. <laughs> now we're just negotiating a price. <laughs> Fucking slavery is the same thing. You're going to take 100% of somebody's I like that. That's good. <laughs> earnings, but um, you'll take 100% of somebody's earnings. At what point is it not slavery? If you're still taking Jeremy's going to try that. I can see that. <laughs> oh. I'd like to try that with one of Jeremy's relatives, but we'll we'll oh. we'll keep that one <laughs> under wraps. He's married now. She's, got married. She's, She's married. 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 Marriage is BS. I don't believe in it. We don't believe nobody. <laughs> same, same argument for taxation, though. If, if what's the difference between between taking one percent and a hundred percent? The implications the same either way is that that person you're taking it from doesn't own themselves. You're saying that because you're violating their property rights, and property rights only exist because we own ourselves. And it's, I wish natural rights was something that people would get more of. I think the Constitution did a lot of damage in that regard because people constantly fucking defer to the Constitution for like freedom of speech, all this shit. All you need is natural rights. Nobody has the right to coerce anybody else. If you just look at that, free speech falls into that pretty fucking easy. Right to bear arms falls into that pretty fucking easy. Right to not force somebody to testify against themselves falls into that pretty fucking easy. You don't have to make, you know, uh, so no slavery, pretty easy. You know what I mean? You don't have to have, defer to a document that was written by other men. It's, that's, all that is is an appeal to authority. Yeah, that, that's what we were. Uh, I was talking about the other day with someone is – the, I I I don't believe in like a varying degree of slavery. Like, you're either a slave or you're not. No, and yeah, exactly. Like, well. you can't be just kind of a slave or hey, I'm completely a slave. Like, you're either a slave at its core. You're either a slave or you're not. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. You know that that question right there is a really good cognitive dissonance tester. You know, you ask someone at what like if a hundred percent taxation is slavery. At what point is it not? And that question right there, you can see they're not going to. If someone doesn't answer that question at zero percent, then they've got cognitive dissonance. I've had people get offended at me and block me and shit and say that it's offensive to compare mm -hmm. American slavery, slavery specifically, not like the Egyptian slavery or any other other historical slavery, but it's offensive to pair Americans compare American slavery to government. That's just do you, do you do you know what the Egyptian slaves were? Jews. Yeah, yeah. But, do you, but do you know what kind of slaves they were? They were tax slaves. Yep. It, well, they, I, I guess they, I didn't know that. They went home at night. That's hilarious. They were tax <laughs> slaves. They or, they could only work for the Egyptian Hold Empire, on. and they had to pay taxes. But my response to that, like getting offended about that, it's we've already established what kind of person you are. You're a slave. Now we're just negotiating a price. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's all it is. The, 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 well, see, Dave said, you, you, I mean, Dave said, you don't see degree. Well, most people do. So I'm willing to, I'm willing to, to, to grant that. Okay, the degree exists, but the act itself doesn't change. And that's, well, most that's people the point. believe in statism. Still, so. Well, yeah, but the, there is a matter of degree. You can't really deny that there is a matter I, of degree. I wouldn't because, deny that there's a matter of degree. So, I, but, but it's, yeah, but, it, it, but, but that's all it is. It's a matter, you know, the act doesn't change, you know, but like you were saying about how you don't need all this other stuff because, you know, it, everything falls. It's the same thing with just the laws in general that people are so worried about if you want to think of it on the broadest terms you only need one don't steal because everything rape murder assault all these things are a form of theft of, of some of some forth you, you, of your time your physical well-being your 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 you know your life um whatever you know your 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 privacy you, you know freedom yeah exactly so you know when you, when you think about those terms people are so worried about this stuff it's like yeah that's all you really need if you need stuff written on paper beyond that to specify, then you... you're not a good person. You're yeah, because you can't think for yourself. Like you can't think of that. You can't just say, "Oh, okay." <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, there's no such thing as a good order follower. <laughs> I agree. That's that. But that quote by Mark Passio is actually in one of my songs called. Let me check real quick. It's called Order Follower. Shit. Uh, yeah. yeah. The last no. one. That was the second to last one I was listening to before I started. The, before we started the show. <laughs> No such thing as a good order follower. It's an un it's it's an unthinking position. You're just literally doing something that somebody told you to do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, well, maybe we should uh, wrap up, deliver our final closing remarks. Uh, Jared, yeah. thanks a lot for coming. Man, in the show. thanks for having me, guys. It's been awesome. 
Really, really appreciate what you do, your work. You know, I hope you continue doing it. Um, you know, and I'm really happy that that you're financially stable, so that you you can yeah, yeah. continue regardless of the donations. So that's really cool. Um, you know, because it's it's all about the message. You know, I don't I don't do this and my channel <clears throat> for the money. <laughs> right. For a it's while, about, you know? it's about being an example too. So it'd be one thing if I'm out here saying to the world, "Hey, embrace anarchy and embrace voluntary association," and I'm like struggling to survive or something like that. They're like, "Fuck that guy. His ideas are gonna get <laughs> killed." You know what I mean? No, I I work hard, dude. I'm not even not even close to being in financial trouble at all. I really believe in voluntary association, agorism, doing everything you can to render the state obsolete. Bitcoin, yep. blockchain, that shit, it's all, the, st the state's gonna get rendered obsolete no matter what. It's not gonna happen because of voting. It's gonna happen because of shit like technological innovation and people getting smarter, just like, you know, the cotton gin kind of rendered cotton slavery obsolete it wasn't really that the, the government banned it it was that technology had already fucking caught up with the government at that point yep yeah well, so, yeah, the freedom, freedom is a one-way, uh, one-way street, and you know you're either on on the boat towards freedom, or you're holding everyone back, right, from, yeah, from true yeah. progress. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of yours. I'm a big fan of your post on Facebook. I, I keep doing what you're doing, man. Um, don't stop, uh, no matter what anyone ever tells you. Just keep going. Thanks, uh, man. I won't. And uh, looking forward to the song you were talking to me and Danilo and Jeremy about uh, that you're making for the show, and maybe we can make that our intro song yeah. or a clip of it our intro yeah. song and yeah, yeah it's yours awesome. if you want it no yeah. obligation but yeah you yeah, like yeah, it. yeah yeah no ip <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's uh, not it's not hard to top my work so uh, i'm sure it'll be greatly appreciated <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so uh i ask every one of our guests this i know you already know what's coming what's your favorite quote oh man I should have prepared for this. <laughs> Everyone does that. And he, and he actually claims to be a listener to this. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got a quote. I got a quote. I got a quote. I got a quote. By Ludwig von Mises. It's they aim at the establishment of what is called socialism, communism, planning, or state capitalism. All these terms signify the same thing. That's my quote. Love that quote. Economic totalitarianism. Yeah, man, we fucking argue over capital, or we argue over communism and socialism. Well, socialism's not communism, and communism's not socialism. Middle of the road policies all fucking lead to socialism, and they're all the same thing. Read Mises. You'll yeah. thank me later. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that, man. That's a, that's a great quote. I'm not yeah. saying you guys should read Mises, but. Um, no, I, I have to. <laughs> Everybody in the world should read Jesus. <laughs> oh, we, we all should. We know Dave won't because it involves reading. So, <laughs> it, I would listen to Human Action on, on audio books. Book, but... Are there any yeah. audio books okay. for okay. Human Action? Do you, do, you, do, you yeah, yeah, what, yeah. do you hear what Jared explained before? He needs to all his concentration to read. See, I can't. I can't. If see, he needs here's my all problem. His concentration all... to read Human Action. There is no <laughs> way in the hell you are grasping anything beyond every fiftieth word. <laughs> I won't even listen on audiobook. <laughs> to be fair, it is on audiobook, and I a lot of Mises's work is available for free on audio audiobook on Mises. Dot work. Again, those damn capitalists, you know. Just um, I, uh, I I don't like that subtle jab you gave me, Jeremy. It's not appreciated. <laughs> but uh, it's I get like a thirty. Notif 30, 40 notifications from Twitter a day. I get like 400 from Facebook. Like, I can't read and do all that, but I can listen and do all that. <laughs> all right, Jeremy, so that's, that, that's, your, that's, your, that's priority, your assignment. Priority, for, that's, Jeremy, priority. that's your assignment for next week. Danilo's going to be off, right? Danilo's going to be off next week, so Dave's assignment is to listen on, to human action on... Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, you're killing and we'll me! And we'll discuss it next week. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> book, book report. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Jeremy, you want to wrap us up? Well, no, yeah. I just want—I just want to say thanks for uh, you know coming on too. Um, you know, like I said before, you know, I'm glad—I'm glad I found you outside of the show too, because uh, you know you, you have a, you have a fan in me now, and uh, hopefully there'll be a lot more, even even more people like me who, you know, like I said, aren't—it's not their usual genre, but they just come across it, and the message is, you know, like I said, I mean, obviously. I, I listened to one of the songs. I mean, as we were as we were getting ready for the show, what was it? Uh, what's the name of that one that uh, has uh, Mary Jane's Last Dance in the background? Is that the one? That, is that the one that plays? Yeah, that's uh, that one's called Blue Skies. Yes, uh, that's one. Of, that's my favorite Tom Petty song. So <laughs> <laughs> I was just just that alone. I was like, all right, I can listen to this. And then I started listening to some of the other stuff, and I was like, I was like, wow, I, yeah. And 
like I said, rap's not my thing, but I the message works for me. So uh, and I really you know. appreciate the kind words and checking out, and really appreciate you guys having me on the show. I I listen and I, I, I listen I, in every week, and I this is I listen to this Free Domain Radio, nice. Tom Woods and Peter Schiff, and Peaceful Anarchism. Nice. I appreciate I, I, the shout out. I wish Tom Woods and <laughs> P- Peter Schiff would kind of pull down a, away from their statism a little bit sometimes, but yeah, I do too. But they're they're they. They know economics, man. They do, yeah, yeah. I listen to them for economics mostly. Yeah, that's all I listen to them for. And if you take their economics to their logical furthest extent, they um, they're not really status. But when you have Peter Schiff lose his dad to the state in the way he did, stuff like that, I can kind of understand his position. And Tom Woods probably close enough to him to have it affect him too. I, I can't. I don't judge them for that because of the contributions they've made to mm. the movement. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, when 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 discussing that thing, and and I'll just try to wrap that up, uh, yeah, right, wrap this that. up. No, yeah. is uh like, I don't think that like if the state was crumbling, Tom Woods would be sitting there at the you know the White House steps saying we need a government, like or our Peter Schiff, you know, like so so I'm not I'm not sitting there saying that they're like a full That'd blown. Disappointing. I don't think they're like full blown status, but I, I definitely think that they try to appeal to that a little too much, in my opinion. That's fair. I think that's a fair assessment. And again, that's my all, my opinion. And Tom Woods is getting fifty thousand downloads an episode, and we're we're <laughs> not. So they, they, they have a much they have a much broader reach. Well, and if they, if they that's that's more. not the point of, of Maybe this we this get show. On, get them on this show. You guys could have a discussion with them. Yes. Um, I've talked to a few of them. So. Yeah. Dave is he, he's talked to them. Whether they've talked back, is, <laughs> <laughs> they won't discuss. True. But, True. <laughs> Dave has no self-control or restraint when it comes to talking to people, so you know he, he just should, puts the word no, out there. He's, he's, Wait, he's he, the, he puts the line, and then whoever bites. He's the booking <laughs> agent. He's not supposed to have any restraint. Right. I, 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 I've never been like that. My mom's always said I could talk to a wall, and I could. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, you have to. Jeremy drinks easily. <laughs> you have that, to. Br- that, 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 that explains why he just cuts everybody off all the time because he does, he just imagines that nobody's there. Exactly. <laughs> you know. <laughs> he's probably got a piece of paper up over his computer screen. He can't even see us. <laughs> <laughs> Who's talking right now? Uh, uh, th- thanks so much for coming on, Jerry. You're you're welcome to come back anytime if you want to uh, talk about anything or, or whatever, man. Yeah, I really appreciate you sharing and talking and and doing what you do, man. That's awesome. I'll come yeah, back so anytime, guys. Awesome. So so yeah, to our listeners, please follow you know Jerry Wan on uh, Facebook, um, Twitter, SoundCloud. And uh, you know, share his work, like, comment, or whatever you whatever you want to do. Favorite, you know, just share his work. Help spread the message because we're all doing what we can to uh, increase voluntary cooperation and association in the world and decrease coercion. Right? That's that's what that's what civilization is all about. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, thanks a lot. Uh, if you want to fi- um, support our show, you, you can do again same like, comment, share, subscribe our shows, donate uh, through uh, Bitcoin or Patreon. Um, we will be most grateful mm-hmm. for any support, any support you can uh, you can throw at us. Um, it would help us do what we do best. So thanks a lot, everyone. This is uh, Seeds Liberty Podcast. Um, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Plant Bye. seeds. Peace. Night.